Hey guys, welcome back to Foam Dude. In this video, we are going to continue our conversation on the Toposet utility that we started learning the last time. And we are going to continue our conversation into split mesh utility at the end of this video. So a typical, uh, the, a typical workflow for a multi-region case looks like this. You start with some background mesh, then you create your respective cell zones either using Toposet or SnapEx mesh. Then you have to split the mesh into their respective regions, which are formed by one or more cell zones. Once the regions are ready, you have to assign the boundary conditions and you simply run the solver. I've already covered the previous steps on block mesh and SnapEx mesh in different videos. Feel free to check them out. They will be linked in the video description below. So let's look at the deposit dict. The deposit dict from last time, I've modified it just a little bit. And the reason why I'm covering it a little bit more is to show you why defining the, the bounding box is a, is a very critical operation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a distribution of cells or cell zones in a layer-like fashion. So I have a background mesh uh, in a cubicle shape. I'm going to divide that in three parts. The top part and the bottom part are going to form a, 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 a solid plate or they're going to form a region called heater and the middle sandwich part is going to form water. So it's you can you can think of it as water flowing between two parallel plates and the parallel plates will be called heater hereafter. So we saw the last time how to create a new cell zone from a cell set, how to add cells in your previously created cell sets, so on and so forth. We also saw how to invert the cell set to get, get everything minus the original cell set. So I'm going to utilize these three features. Uh, most, of it, mo most of it is already available in the previous deposit or you can simply download the latest files for the values. So here we are selecting two boxes which form the top end and the, and the bottom end of the geometry. Then we invert the cell set to create everything else except the heater cell set and we define it as water. So given that, let's run our block mesh one more time. If you have already run the block mesh and if you already have poly mesh directory, then make sure you delete that first. So I'm going to delete my previously generated poly mesh if it's there. And I'm going to start by running block mesh. Immediately thereafter, I will run to pause it and open Paraview for visualization. So here's an interesting thing. First of all, I'm going to switch on the, the set display and I'm going to turn off everything else. Once our display is ready, I'm only going to pick heater cell set. So let's look at the heater cell set and you will notice something peculiar. You will see that all the cells at the boundary faces are not included in their respective cell sets. And the reason is because of inherent approximities or inherent floating point uh, approximations. If you specify the bounding box which overlaps with the edges or vertices of your background mesh, they may not be selected every single time. So here you can see some of them are selected, some of them are not selected. So the way to overcome this type of a problem is to specify your bounding box that exceeds your uh, your vertex definition or edge definition just by a little bit. So when it exceeds, it and it encompasses everything else that that's supposed to be in that cell set, and that way you can capture all the cells efficiently. So the way I'm going to do it is I will just extend my bounding box by a millimeter in each direction, and you will immediately see the effect. So just to understand the effect, I'm only going to do it for one cell set. Feel free to do it for the other one as well if you wish, but I want to show you the effect it has. So I'm going to remove the poly mesh directory and start by repeating the workflow again. I will run block mesh and immediately thereafter I will run toposet. So let's repeat the steps. I'm going to open Paraform, make sure I'm including the sets and I'm going to turn off everything else. There we go. And now you will immediately be able to see the difference 
that the new definition of deposit has made. So the top heater where we did not edit the bounding box definition is still irregular, whereas the bottom one is quite regular. So if you turn on the display to surface with edges, you can clearly see the difference. Now the next question is, how do you find out the inverted cell set? So the inverted cell set appears as water, like we defined in deposit, and you will see that available here. So let's switch off heater and just display water, and you will see the exact mirror image of everything else that is left after the inversion process. So we have the water in the middle, we have heater in the top, and heater at the bottom. So with that, let's move to the next step, which is split mesh. So split mesh operates in a way where you have to split the mesh by the predefined cell zones. So you have to make sure that you have defined cell zones either through snappy X mesh or deposit. If the mesh does not include any cell zones, then it won't be able to split into anything. And if you want to, if you want to check if your mesh your background mesh has cell zones or not, just go to the polymesh directory and you will find a file called cell zones where, where everything is, is defined, everything is grouped into respective cell zones. So let's go back and let's look at how the split mesh operates. So you're going to type in split mesh regions and the arguments that are most relevant to us is either cell zones or cell zones only. The difference between the two arguments is if you specify dash cell zones, then it divides your cell zones in physically disconnected regions. And what I mean by that is it will create cell zones where, uh, let's say in our case, we have heater separated physically by the water. So if we use dash cell zones, then it will, it will create two different regions for two different portions of the heater cell zone. And since we haven't defined those separately, it will assign a default name to one of those two. So you will see something like domain zero and heater, or you will see domain two heater. And we don't want that. We, we want both portions of the mesh or both portions of the cells grouped into a same cell zone called heater. And that's why we are going to specify dash cell zones only. If you wish you do not want to do that, then the best way to do in that case is when you define your deposit dict, instead of adding cells in the same cell zone, which are physically disparate, simply create a new cell zone. So instead of action add, create a new uh, cell set. And instead of heater, you will create two of these, let's say heater one and heater two. If you do that, then split mesh regions dash cell zones will create three regions in total, water, heater one, and heater two. But if you don't group the group the cell set into respective cell zones uh, individually, then it will create a default cell zone and another cell zone called heater. So since we have already grouped them together in one cell zone, I'm just going to use dash cell zones only. Make sure to put override uh, flag as well. So it will override the previous mesh. Once you do that, you will immediately see that our system directory produce two new folders, water and heater, for the respective two cell zones. Similarly, you have a zero directory with water and heater. You have a constant directory with heater and water. Let's look at how our mesh looks. So I'm going to do paraform. And now you will immediately be able to see a difference. If I made a mistake, you have to do paraform built-in. You have to use the built-in reader module to visualize the uh, multi-region cases. So let's do it. And there we go. Uh, the coloring is VTK block. So you will see different blocks or different cell zones by different colors. A quick tip is wherever you see this, something is overlapping or some kind of, uh, some kind of shading that's like, you see some, some sort of like stripes here. That's because there are two regions. Uh, overlapping each other and that's because of your internal mesh that is the pre-splitting mesh that was your default mesh so just uncheck this box and this overlap will go away so now you can see in the regions you have a heater region with an internal mesh that means heater region has its own mesh 
the water region has its own mesh and both of them are grouped separately or individually and you can quickly see that the heater heat region is comprised of two physically unconnected bodies there we go so we learned how to properly utilize deposit by defining bounding bounding box in a more correct way we also learned how to split mesh using cell zones and cell zones only as the two flags a quick recap cell zones only will group even the physically disconnected cell zones together in one cell zone if they are defined that way and cell zones flag just the cell zones will split physically disconnected cell sets grouped in one cell zone with that i will stop for now and i will see you in the next one